Right, brothers and sisters, welcome back to the Beef Series. I've had such an amazing trip. I hope you've been enjoying it. And if you haven't seen episodes from one through to three, what? Then I encourage you to go back and check them out because it will explain what the hell is going on in this episode four. In episode four, I was gonna show how easy it is to age a piece of beef. Wrong. Should we have a recap? dry aged artisan meat, I'm on a mission to learn all about it. Well done is probably the same as rare to me. It's not a great way to, to show steak. Obviously you've got to put your hand in Belfast. So if I wanted to try and have a go at doing this at home, you've no chance. No, you can't do this in the domestic environment. If I want to buy a four ring, look at that brand. Before black bank and you don't think that the cross needs aging either? I don't see a difference in the texture or the taste. So my original plan was wrong. And it's not just that. As Richard now explains when I went to see him, what you really want to do if you want to replicate what the professionals are doing, you need something that's called a roasting. If you're endeavour endeavour making beef, you really need to age it on like a, a roasting pan, that side. It's going to be really difficult to do yourself. Really? Unless you've got a walking feature, you know, climate control area. Thanks Richard, see you in a couple of weeks. I've seen the size of that beef. Oh no. It's a massive piece of beef. I was gonna use that. You're gonna need a bigger fridge. Sisters, when you're dry aging beef, there are two key elements that you've got to focus on. The first one is temperature. It's recommended between two and four, but Peter said get as close to two degrees as you can. The second element is humidity. You need to hit 80% or lower, more like 75%. So what I've gone and done is I've gone and dropped a pretty penny on the top of the range catering fridge. I've got it with a glass door, so I won't have to keep opening and shutting it. I can keep an eye on it. Got the lights on the side. <laughs> oh, it's so shiny. Now, what's so cool and exciting about having a proper piece of kit is that this guy has this proper fan at the top. And so what that's going to do is it's gonna drive the air circulation so there's good air all around the beef. What it also means is, is that it's going to drive that displacement of moisture and it will create this crust on the outside that will be even. The second element is because it's a proper catering fridge, then I'm gonna be able to hit the two degrees temperature that's absolutely vital to smashing this. Okay, so that's that, but what about humidity? Well, I've got two things that I'm doing to control that. First one is, follow me. Right, so next up, the Himalayan salt. I bought a load of Himalayan salt blocks. I need to drill some holes in here, and then I'm going to attach those to the spare trays that I've got, the shelves that sit inside the fridge, and hand those inside, and they are going to help control the humidity and to create the right environment to age the beef. How class is that? Right, I'm gonna leave them in the studio overnight to really dry out, and then I'll get them in the fridge first thing in the morning and then we'll go pick up the beef. Right, now I've moved drilling inside because it's quite damp outside and I noticed that the salt blocks were getting quite wet, which is a good sign that they show that they're gonna do their job, that they absorb the moisture that's in the air, but I don't want them to be soaked through so they don't do a job in there. So I brought it in, I'm gonna attach them all up. get you sorted out, chef. It's taken a lot of time to get to this point. It's cost a fair bit of money to get all the equipment in place, get all the salt, get the fridge. I don't know what the beef's gonna cost me, but we're looking at minimum 500 quid. So there's a fair bit of cost that goes into properly dry aging beef. Not only getting set up, but now I'm gonna have to wait 28, 30, 40 days for the beef to be ready. I guess already I've got a newfound appreciation 
and respect for for the butchers for the artesian butchers that take the time to select rare breeds to um to properly age them and 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 i do really feel that that a dry aged piece of beef is a work of art it is something extremely special it is worth the extra cost and i think that choosing quality meat eating less of it but eating the good stuff and eating more vegetables that is the way to go see you in the morning so this is a 30 plus kilo roasting which um, is uh, the rib and the loin attached together roasting is too big to fit in there. I'm just gonna have to take off two or three ribs at the end so that it can fit in there and then we'll be able to hang it again. I've just cut through the rib bones to create a channel so that I can put my string through so I can now tie it up. Let's get in the fridge. It's in. <laughs> it's so heavy. Right, let's get the salt in. <sighs> right, so that's it. The beef's in. God, doesn't it look amazing? Like, I can't quite believe what I'm doing. Um, I'd be lying if I said, I wasn't really nervous, like the humidity is sky high at the moment. <laughs> I am nervous. <laughs> I am nervous. It's in there for the next month, right? So it's such a cool feeling actually to have like met Richard, then gone to Ireland to meet Peter, then go and see Martine in, in Scotland. And even though I didn't end up using Wagyu, it was an incredible time there and I learned so much about what is arguably the most prized breed of beef. That's it brothers and sisters. Now, next week's episode, it's not gonna be this. It's gonna need a couple more weeks. We did start this at the beginning of January, so it'll be sometime in February this episode comes out. Now, if you're enjoying the Beef Series, please subscribe to the channel. It means the world to me that you watch the videos, that you share them, you like them, um, and that you support my work and you allow me, you give me the privilege to go on this journey, like what an incredible journey that we're going on together and your support enables me to do this. So thank you, increase the peace, spread the love and don't fuck it up. <laughs> now guys, if you wanna buy the steaks that I make from this beef roasting, just like I sold the bacon in the bacon series, then let me know in the comment box below.